Hey everyone, it's Erin Bassett here. Now, a viewer recently asked me about cutting out designs on fabric and you know how to go about doing that um, if there's a certain pattern you wanna cut out. Now, um, I'm using, for example, this cute little kitty. Um, it's a panel of fabric that I had bought previously. And, um, you know, with COVID-19, I'm not going out shopping for fabric uh, hands-on uh, right now in my state. So um, this is what I have to show you an example of how you go about doing that. So really, this is a video to show you the process of um, how you scan in fabric and then be able to cut out a design to be able to use in a project. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here is my panel that I'm using for this. And I'm just going to cut this piece of uh, fabric, this fabric panel in half. Um, of course, saving my cute little design so that I can play with those later. Um, but that way I can put this fabric, uh, both the front and the back of the cat, um, onto my 12 by 24 inch um, standard mat uh, for my scan and cut DX. So the reason why I chose this mat is um, that these cats are tall. So if I put my, uh, you know, highest point of my pattern, that tail um, up at the top, it goes down to about uh, 14 and a half, 15 inches. So I need to use um, this longer mat for that. Um, and of course, width wise, there's no way to fit those cats on, right? So um, I'm just going to cut straight down the middle and then be able to put them onto this longer mat. Okay, so I have a 12 by 24 inch standard mat for my scan and cut. And I went ahead and put fabric support sheets on it. And what this does is it puts a extra level of stickiness onto these um, so that it really holds onto your fabric. So I'm just gonna take off these protective covers. Actually, I'm gonna make sure that I have it on well. Let's go put this over here and smooth it on, make sure any, or most of the air bubbles are off or out. just want to remove that backing and hold on to it because you're going to want to put it back down on here and move this one now make sure once you have fabric support sheets on that you don't uh, put paper on this on top of here because it will not come off okay so I'm gonna come on the other side of my camera move this out of the way. So I put some uh, removable, washable uh, fabric stiffener on here. Um, I like to do that when I'm cutting things out because then it just cuts quicker. Um, but especially with this fabric support sheet, um, it helps also when you're removing it to keep your fabric from stretching out. So that this can be washed off, um, can be rinsed off um, after you're done cutting it or um, after you're done sewing it, washing it in the machine and then um, you know stuffing it with the stuffing. That's good too. Okay, so I put this on and that is not going anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to open up my machine and I just wanna put this between the two bumpers right there and hit the load button. Okay, so we want to be able to scan this. So I am just gonna click scan and I'm gonna do direct cut. I'm gonna send it over the internet, over to my computer, so I can um, clean up any lines on there um, and just have a bigger view than what's on here to be able to make sure I got it all good. So make sure your scan area is the same size as your mat, and if it isn't, click that little wrench and adjust it. When you're ready, hit start. And my uh, workspace is not 24 inches long, so I'm just gonna make sure that the mat has plenty of space and doesn't run into the wall. Okay, 
Okay, so now this is gonna transfer over to my computer and I'll show you over there on Canvas Workspace. I'm using the Mac version. Um, I'll show you what I do and then I'm gonna send it back over here and cut it out. Okay, so I'm going into Canvas Workspace so I'm clicking over on image tracing and then choosing the scanned by your machine option. And that's going to pop up. Now, as you can see, this is really the backside of my cat from when I scanned that in. But it gives you a couple different options. You can um, trace with just the outer edge only or trace by color or trace with enhanced image tracing, which is what we're going to do. Now there's a couple different settings um, that you can play with here. I like to make sure that I turn off the trace outer edge only and I put the output, output smoothing level to medium. Um, and then you can just choose to um, remove or add different sections of this. Anything that has that um, light blue color on it is gonna be um, part of your pattern. So um, I'm just choosing which parts I want to remove, that negative space removes, um, the one with the little plus sign adds, um, and then of course you have your eraser and your delete button if you just want to start all over. Um, so I'm just cleaning that up quickly, um, and in reality when you're doing this, especially if you've done it a few times, it really goes really quick. Um, so it might seem, you know, like a lot of steps to go through right now, um, especially on this simple of a design, but it really is a quick process to do. Um, and I'm not even going to worry about that flower and heart that's over on the left hand side. So I can just delete that once I get back to the mat. So I'm just going to hit processing and it puts it over on my mat and you can see like here's this little mark right here. I can just select that and hit delete on my keyboard. Same thing with that flower and the heart. Um, you know, I didn't work on perfecting those. Now you can see um, the mat is obviously the wrong size. So go over on the right hand side to the artboard and pick the 12 by 24 inch mat and that will adjust that for you. So now we have, um, you know, our cat. Um, now remember, this is just, if we sent it over to cut right now, it would cut on that orange um, borderline. So it wouldn't give us the seam allowance that we need. So in order to do that, you wanna select your cat and then go up to edit and then click on uh, create offset line. And here you can create as big of one as you want, um, whatever you want that seam allowance to be, um, or you know how you want the corners rounded or not, or you know all those different options are right under this. So once you get it set how you like, you can go ahead and click OK. And then there we see that outline or that seam allowance around it. Now, if you go to your layers panel, you can see there's, you know, both the shape of the cat and then the seam allowance around the cat. Um, I just go ahead and delete the actual cat shape because I don't want it to um, cut out on my skin and cut. I want to keep that cat in, intact and just be able to cut out the seam allowance that I need. So I'm deleting that cat shape. And now that I'm ready to send it back to my scan and cut, I'll go up to file and then transfer um, via wire wireless internet. Okay, so I'm back over here. Now I'm just gonna hit that transfer button. It's gonna pull it back up. Has my outline. I can change anything if I needed to. I don't think I do. So I'm going to select cut and make sure my half cut is off. Um, I have my auto blade in here, so you'll hear it when it first uh, comes to the mat. It will drill down and uh, see the depth of my fabric um, or whatever material you're putting on here, and then it will cut it out. So you don't have to change it. You don't have to say I'm cutting vinyl or I'm cutting fabric or leather or whatever. Um, it will uh, sense that out itself, okay? So I'm just gonna hit start. So there it goes, testing the depth.
Okay, so before I remove it from here, I just wanna test, make sure that it cut through um, and it looks like it did. So I'm safe to take this off and um, remove all the extra fabric. I'm just gonna unload it, move this out of the way. Okay, so now I'm just gonna peel this off. And again, you just wanna be careful um, if you didn't use any type of support or um, anything on your fabric. Remember I used that um, temporary fabric stiffener just so when I was doing this part, I wouldn't be pulling it out of shape. Okay, so there it is. And now I'll cut out the other side of my fabric. Okay, so now that I have those cut out, I will match them up um, with their right sides together. And of course, since you can see through fabric, it's pretty easy to match those up. Let me get some clips for this. So I like using clips. Um, you can use pens, of course, if that's what you have, um, but you can just make sure that uh, all your pieces are together and then go ahead and take it to your machine and zip around it real quick. Okay, so I all finished obviously sewing it, stuffing it, um, and I'm adding these little whisker details. Since for my purpose, I'm not giving this as, you know, a, a toy for a child or anything. This is just a cute little decoration. I'm not worried about these being very secure um, or whatnot. But if you are, you could do this step before you even um, put it together, sewing it or anything. Um, and that way you can knot it underneath. But really what I'm going to do is I just have black thread unknotted on my needle. I'm just sticking it in um, one spot going through to another. Let's see, I want to go over here. Okay. And then uh, pulling it and going through until it's the right length that I like. And then taking scissors and just trimming it off. So there I have my little whiskers. Now, the next thing I want to do is um, the tail. So obviously it's pretty floppy. Um, and so I want to just tack it on um, right like that. So I just have a little bit of orange thread um, on my needle. This is knotted and I'm just gonna tack it on right there um, so that it stays put. For more information about Skin and Cut, visit skinandcut.com. And for more ideas and inspiration, visit erinbassett.com.